Welcome to this brief session on Year 13 Knowledge Gaps again. This one is on the use of statistical tests and completing those four mark statistical tests in your A-level exam paper that you potentially will receive and also using the term analysis and how to respond to that as a command term in paper three. So we're going to look at the t-test, Spearman's rank, mean, median and interquartile range as well as a paper three analyze instructions list. So let's get started with the student t-test. The first thing to note is a t-test is used to test if there is a t statistical difference between the mean of two sets of data. So you'll have two sets of data given to you and you'll have the mean of those two sets of data. Now, most of the time of the t-test, they will give you a partially completed one, such as on screen. So they'll give you that the two hypotheses are the null and the alternative hypothesis. They'll give you, as you can see in the middle of the screen, the formula to use. But in this case, you don't need to use it, of course, because they've given you the partially completed t-test. And they've never given one that's not partially completed. So rely on the partially completed answer. And it says t equals 22.1 over 4.43. When you see that, all you've got to do, easiest marks in the world, is get your calculator out and divide those numbers they give you. And that will give you t equals 4.99. The next step then is that they give you this figure, which gives you confidence levels and critical values for the t-test. So the key thing to remember with these confidence values for both the t-test and Spearman's rank is this, and this is why most of you struggle with this. The closer to 100% confidence on the table, so 0.01, 99% significance, says that you accept the alternative hypothesis. There is a significant difference. You are 99% significantly confident that there is a difference. And therefore, if we look at this question where we had the t-test answer of 4.99, we can see that our critical value is well above 4.99. So it falls into this 0.01 confidence category which means that we are confident if we completed this test 100 times again, we would come out with the same answer. Therefore, we can say there is a significant difference in the two means and we accept the alternative hypothesis. That's all there is to it. You need to remember the closer to 100% confidence you are, you accept the alternative hypothesis. There is a significant difference. If our t-test answer was not 4.99, and if it was 1.2, we would see that is 0 0.10 confidence, and that would mean we accept the null hypothesis. There's no significant difference. Hopefully that clears that up and that makes sense. And of course, we apply the same rule to Spearman's rank. And here is an example of a Spearman's rank, and you've done this one before. So Spearman's rank tests the strength of correlation, the strength of relationship between two sets of data. So this one is for silica in lava and volatile gases. So we rank them, that's given to you. You're given D, which is the sum of difference. You're given the sum of difference squared. And for year 13, anyway, you've done this question before and most of you skipped the very first part of it which is to calculate the sum of d squared. That will always be at the bottom of a table given to you like this and to do that you add all of the d squareds up so 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 9 plus 9 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 that gives you 30. Very simple basic calculator maths. The next thing you will be required to do in a Spearman's rank is this. They will give you the formula which is Rs equals 1 minus 6 and the sum of d squared divided by n cubed to the minus n. Now, n always simply means the number of values. And in this case, as we can see on our table, it's 12. It might be 10, it might be 12. This case, it's 12. You must show you're working for these answers and that's why they're worth two marks. So you have to plug the data in to the formula. 
RS equals 1 minus stays the same. Okay? 6 stays the same. Sum of stays the same, means multiply. D squared is where you put 30 in. Divided by N3, 12 to the power of 3, minus N, 12. So that looks like this. So you physically just plug in the 30 and the 12. When you calculate that on a calculator, because you're allowed a calculator in geography, again, simple calculation, what you get is 0 0.90. That is therefore the Spearman's rank answer. If you get an answer that is 0 0.899, you can round it to 0 0.90. You can round it to two decimal places. But next, this is the harder part again that we've just done with the t-test that some of you struggle with. You're given the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Null, no significant relationship. Alternative, there is a significant relationship. You're given the confidence levels, which are exactly the same for the t-test as they are for Spearman's rank, and you're given the critical values. We know our critical value that we got was 0 0.90. So again, it is above the 0 0.01 confidence level. It is close to 100% significant. The key rule, closer to 100% confidence or significance, except the alternative, there is a significant difference. All that means is, if we were to do this test again and again and again and again, we would find the same answer. Therefore, we accept the alternative hypothesis. That is all there is to a Spearman's rank and a t-test. The process is the same for both. The rule of closer to 100% significance is the same for both. You accept the significant difference, the alternative hypothesis. Let's move on. Here's a bit of an easier one. So you can be asked to calculate the mean of recorded deaths in this case. So we have recorded deaths from earthquakes in this case. We have at the bottom a summary of the statistics. They've done this for you. I would actually get you to do this yourself. If it was me as the examiner, this is too easy. So the number of tsunami events is 10. The death recorded is 988. Calculate the mean. The mean is the total divided by the number of variables. 988 divided by 10, 98.8. Don't round that, just leave it as it is. Next, calculate the median number of deaths recorded. Median means middle. So what you have to do is you have to round up the numbers like I've done at the bottom of the screen here on rough paper, lowest to highest. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 8, 10, 12, 26, 156, 170, 600. To get the median, you have to find the middle number. So what you do is, and the way I do it, is manual and old-fashioned. I work from each end and cancel each out till I get to the middle. So what you do then is, you find with this one, that there is no middle value. There's none that's left behind. If 26 is where we stopped, it would be 12. But there is no middle value because each side has 5. So what do we do? What we do is we find the middle of where we stopped there. So between 10 and 12. The middle of 10 and 12 is 11. 11 is your median. 11 is the median value of those numbers. Let's move on. Final one on this. Calculate the interquartile range for the number of deaths recorded. You must show you're working. Two marks. So you must do something in this space. Again, what I would suggest you do here is as follows. Order the numbers, just like we've done for the median. You've got the median of 11, but now you've got to find the median again of the other two halves of the data. So, it looks like this. This is our ordered numbers. Now we've got to find the median of the top half and of the bottom half. So what do we do? The median is 3 for the top half and the median is 156 for the bottom half. How did I get that? Well, what I did was I looked at the two sets of data in half I then subtracted the lowest from the highest value. Or you can cancel them out again. So you can go cancel out 12 and 1, cancel out 10 and 2, and cancel out what's left and you get your 3 and so on. So all you do here is you calculate the medians and then subtract 
highest from lowest to get the answer. So that is 156 minus 3, which is 153. They are the middle values. 156 is the median because it is two numbers to 156, then two numbers to the end. That's it. That's the hardest you will be asked in terms of statistical tests. Finally, I wanted to cover a little bit about paper three here and tackling analyze questions in paper three. Now, what does analyze actually mean? This is a bit woolly, but it means to break down the content in the figures you're given step by step. What significant points do they make? Describe what you see. Explain why you see it. Use geographical background from your topics that you know of. And finally, say how and why. So, you need three paragraphs for a paper three analysed question. Each paragraph should be a peel paragraph, which makes a point from the sources you're given. Do not ignore them. Explains the point using your own knowledge in depth. Uses evidence from the sources, data from it, and finally links back to the question. So what I want you to think about in analyzed questions and paragraphs is as follows. What patterns do you see on the sources? Where are most of those things on the sources? Where are least? For example, earthquakes. What stands out as an anomaly or an outlier? Do the two figures, let's say figure two and three, both showing earthquakes, relate to each other? Can you make a link in a paragraph between the two figures showing the same or different things? And finally, is there data in the key that can be used? You will be given a key if it's maps. Is there data in that key that is significant and can be used? So effectively, all you are doing here is describing what you see, explaining it, but then trying to link it to your knowledge and using the sources extremely well, as much as you can. If you get stuck with a paper three analyzed question, what I would suggest you do is write a paragraph on each of the sources you are given and what they show you. That's it. If, that's the, if it's really difficult for you, that is what you should do. But you should be able to by now because you do it in 6 and 8 and 12 and 20 mark questions is come up with some paragraphs that make points about something you're given and then explain them really well. That is all there is to an analysed question. I hope that helps and makes sense. Thank you very much.